My name is Marcus Engbertsen. I'm Lars Kisselsen. Uh, and we're responsible for SLAM uh, as a part of uh, Antenor Driverless Revolve. SLAM is simultaneous localization and mapping. So, what is this? Uh, this essentially means that we're going to map the position of the car uh, along with the position of the cones around the car at the same time. So the problem with this is that it is a chicken and egg problem. Which of these are going to map first? Since what you receive from sensory data is uh, position of the car from GPS and EMU, and you receive position of the cones from the leader data and the camera data. So which of these do you use first in order to map uh, either one? So our system has uh, a LiDAR in the front here. Uh, we have a camera, stereo camera. We have an IMU underneath there. And we're also going to have a GPS, uh, differential GPS. Um, the camera and LiDAR gives us uh, the view of the surroundings, while the uh, IMU and the GPS will give us more like the positional localization uh, of the vehicle. And our goal is essentially to fuse this information in order to gain uh, as much knowledge as possible about where we are and about the surroundings of the car. So in the beginning, the goal is just to design some kind of test platform, which is this RC car, in order to test our algorithms for then later to be able to use them on the full system. Well, it's nice to have an RC car because we can test the algorithm in a simple way before we put them on the full scale. Um, because the, the actuators are not ready on the full scale car and we have to do those safety checks on the full scale car. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to just be able to put this on, uh, make a track in the, in the workshop and just test something really quickly. Well, uh, the environment is going to be slightly different. Uh, it's going to be more uh, distances between each cone, since we're outside. Um, everything is bigger, uh, and we're going to integrate the actual GPS, because inside we can't get uh, these GPS measurements. Um, also going to use probably to use different, uh, slightly different algorithms uh, outside. The, the methods we're going to use in our slam are something called graph slam. So this essentially builds on the concept of a graph. Uh, a graph is some kind of network consisting of nodes, being these circles, which consist of some information, and uh, edges between the nodes, which describe some kind of correlation between these nodes. So what happens in GraphSlam is that we have some node describing the position of the car, say x0. The car will drive. It will then, after some time, have some other position, call it x1. And at each uh, time instant, it will also have, it will also see some landmarks. Call them L1, L2. And they will, it will at different time instances see different uh, cones. So it will maybe see two cones as this one, or it will see two cones as this one, or it will see no, four cones, or it will see two cones as this one. Uh, so what happens is that uh, different kind of information is contained in different kind of nodes information about the position from the GPS and the EMU is contained in the nodes here and information from the camera and the leader are contained in the nodes described by uh, the landmark nodes. Now the edges between the different kind of nodes describe the uh, error between what we expect to see and what we actually see from the measurements. 
Now, the goal of GraphLab is essentially to minimize the error we see in these edges by some kind of optimization procedure. To use some method that's called ISAM2. Uh, that stands for uh, mooding and mapping. There are different kind of methods and we have found some simulation of uh, ISAM1, which is a simpler version of this method which we're going to show you a simulation of here. So this is basically a car driving around a park. And you can see here the trees being mapped and the blue line is the position of the car. You can see that once uh, the car reaches some position where it's been before, the graph kind of shifts to the side. This is due to the fact that you actually minimize the error in the edges as I explained earlier. So as you see it drives for a long time, it will just become a steady graph because the error is minimized.